Hi there. Now, in this tutorial, what I'm going to be looking at is two particles which are connected by a light, inextensible string passing over a smooth, fixed pulley. And what we'll generally be doing is releasing the particles from rest and studying the motion of them. We'll be looking at tensions and accelerations generally. Now suppose we had a light inextensible string which passes over a fixed smooth pulley. Particles of mass 3 kilograms and 2 kilograms are attached at opposite ends of the string. Each part of the string hangs vertically and what we've got to do is find the acceleration of each particle, the tension in each string and the force required to hold the pulley in equilibrium. Now when we have problems like this, always sketch a diagram and then we have to put on the forces acting on each particle. And on the mass of 3 kilograms we've got its weight which is going to act downwards. The weight would be mg, the mass times acceleration due to gravity. So for this one it's going to be 3g newtons. And similarly for the 2 kilogram mass the weight there is going to act downwards and is going to be 2g newtons. Now there's going to be a tension in the string acting on each of the particles and that tension acts upwards. So you've got a tension acting upwards on the 3 kilogram mass, we'll call that t newtons, and there'll be a tension acting upwards on the 2 kilogram mass. Now these two tensions are exactly the same. They're going to be T Newtons. They're exactly the same because the pulley is a smooth pulley. And you're going to find that you'll be generally asked why are the tensions the same? And the answer then is that the tensions are the same when the string passes over a smooth pulley. Now they're the only forces that we need to put on acting on the particles. Next what we need to do is mark on the accelerations. This one having a heavier mass is going to move downwards, this one's going to move upwards. Now they're going to start to speed up so they're going to accelerate. So this one is going to want to accelerate downwards so we mark that in with a double arrow and I'll just call that A meters per second per second. Now this one's going to want to speed up and it's going to want to accelerate upwards then and its acceleration is exactly the same as this one over here only in the opposite direction. Why is that? Well, it's because we've got an inextensible string. It doesn't stretch. As soon as this one moves, this one will move in the opposite direction with the same acceleration, A meters per second per second. And again, we're generally asked, why are the accelerations the same? And the answer is that the acceleration is the same as the string is inextensible. We're dealing with a light inextensible string. The reason why it's light is that as the particle, say in this case, the three kilogram particle moves downwards, if the string was not light, then what would happen, there'll be more weight in the string here as it comes over the pulley. So the masses here on either side of the pulley would keep changing. So that's the reason why we've got a light string. Well that's the typical kind of diagram that we would draw at this stage when we're asked to find the accelerations and tensions in the strings. So how do we find those tensions and accelerations? Well we consider generally each particle in turn. Let's just border this off so we can work this out. We'll consider the 3 kilogram mass first of all. Okay, So it's always good to tell the reader which particle you're working with. So I'm going to say consider the 3 kilogram mass. And 
what we do next is we apply Newton's second law. That's force equals mass times acceleration. And we apply it in the direction of motion. So for the 3 kilogram mass, that's moving downwards. So we resolve effectively downwards, taking downwards as positive, illustrated by the arrow here. So what is the resultant force acting on the 3 kilogram mass downwards? Well, it's all of the weight, 3g. And then it's going to be minus the tension, because that acts in the opposite direction to the way we're resolving. So that's our resultant force. And that resultant force equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 3 kilograms, so we just put 3 there. And the acceleration is A. So we've got two unknowns, the tension and the acceleration. G will take us 9.8. So we can't solve this as it stands, so we're going to need simultaneous equations. So I'm going to number that equation 1. To get our second equation, what we need to do is consider the other mass, in this case the 2 kilogram mass. So let's just put a little intro here to the reader, consider the 2 kilogram mass. Okay, So if we're considering the 2 kilogram mass, again we're going to apply Newton's second law to it. Force equals mass times acceleration. But this time, this particle is moving upwards. So we apply that law in the upward sense. So we resolve upwards, taking upwards as positive. So this time we've got all of T pulling upwards. That's in the positive sense. That'd be plus T. And then we've got minus because the weight now acts in the opposite sense to this. So it's minus 2G. So that's the resultant force acting on the 2 kilogram particle. And this resultant force equals its mass times the acceleration. Its mass is 2 kilograms. And the acceleration is the same. It's A. And this will be our second equation. Now it's up to you how you solve these simultaneous equations for the acceleration and the tension. But generally, the best way is to simply add the two equations, because you'll generally find your t's will cancel out. And that's what I'm going to do here. Going to take equation 1 and add it to equation 2. And if I do that, what we've got is 3g added to minus 2g is going to be g. Remember, the t's cancel one another out. Minus t plus t is 0. And this will equal 3a plus 2a, which is going to be 5a. So therefore, the acceleration okay, is going to be equal to g over 5. g over 5, or 5th g, meters per second per second. Or if we take g to be 9.8, we get that therefore that acceleration, let's just write it in in words, okay, that acceleration turns out to be 9.8 divided by 5, which is 1.96, if you want it as a decimal, meters per second per second. Okay, so that's our acceleration. We need to get the tension next in the string, T newtons. And to do that, all we need to do is just take our acceleration here and substitute it into either equation 1 or equation 2, just to get T. I'm going to sub it into equation 2. So I'll just put that as a note, sub in 2. And if I do that, I get, therefore, t minus 2g equals 2a. 2 times a, 2 times g over 5 is going to give me 2g over 5. And all I need to do now is just add 2g to both sides. So we get t equals 2g plus two-fifths g. And that comes to a total of 12 fifths g. 12 fifths g newtons. Or if I take g to be equal to 9.8, then the tension turns out to be 23.52 newtons. OK? Now for the next part, we're asked to 
find the total force required to hold the pulley in equilibrium. And that requires us looking at the pulley here. And the forces that are acting on the pulley will be two forces coming from the strings. And they will be the tensions acting downwards okay, on both strings. That tension is going to be exactly the same as we've just found. So it'll be tension there and a tension here. That's pulling the pulley down. But to keep it in equilibrium, there's got to be a force pulling upwards. That force we call, say, F, F Newtons. So we've got to find out the value of F. And what I'd want to do then is consider the pulley. So we'll just put a note there. Okay, consider pulley. And I'm going to resolve upwards, taking upwards as positive. So I'm applying Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So we've got all of F acting upwards, so that's going to be positive. And then we've got the two tensions acting downwards, so that's going to be minus 2T. So that's our resultant force on the pulley. And because it's in equilibrium, that resultant force must be equal to zero. And so rearranging this, we find that F equals 2T, if we add 2T to both sides. So if I times the tension then by 2, what I get is a total of 47.04. 47.04 Newtons. That's going to be our force then that's required to keep that pulley in equilibrium. OK, well, I hope this has given you some idea then about how we go about drawing diagrams for these types of problems and how we go about creating our equations for each of the particles. And if ever we're asked to work out the force on the pulley, we can do it like this. OK, 